So I've been doing some videos lately about the lighting of um, imaging with our sea star. And so I decided that it was a good time to go to a lower light bordel and do some imaging in lower bordel light. We did go to a national park that was a dark sky area, but it was too cloudy, so we couldn't image it all that night. So we are going on a drive up a canyon close to us called Trapper's Loop, and we're finding a location outside the city. Uh, this is what the light indicator says on the Sea Star app for the Bortle that we are in. I don't have one of those light scope things that detects the light and tells me what the Bortle is. I'm just using the map in the Sea Star app. If you're not sure how to get to that map that shows you your Bortle, you just open the Sea Star app and down in the bottom, you click the little icon that says nearby. And then in the right hand corner in those little icons, it, there's one that says LP map. That's the light pollution map. And that's showing where I am currently, but we were over in this area when we were doing this imaging. But that's how you find that Bortle scale is there along the bottom. And it's just a, a little sliding scale with color. It's, you know, not super accurate. And, you know, a lot of factors play into this, but this will give you a general idea. Anyway. So we found us a place to stop and pull over. Uh, we had to get off the main road just so that we uh, weren't getting headlights every few minutes. Uh, we did have to watch out for deer. There was a lot of deer up here. Um, and this is where we found a place. Now the, the pictures that we're showing are taken using my iPhone. And the iPhone does try to compensate for the low light. And so it is much darker than this video appears. One thing we did have to contend with was the moon. Uh, we didn't take that into consideration. And so this is basically a trial run for us. We'll come up again when it's not a full moon. Our first image was the a needle galaxy in the constellation Comma Berenices. I, I'm thinking I'm saying that right, but perhaps I'm not. Uh, we did pretty Early on, get a whole bunch of satellites crossing the image. Um, we were also imaging, pointing kind of towards the moon. So this wasn't a fabulous night to do this, um, but this was the Needle Galaxy. Almost instantly, we had two satellites go through our image. Uh, one was kind of a jagged one, so probably a bigger satellite than the the one going to the right ac across the top. Um, but that was really the only issue we had with the satellites was this very first image. And I thought, oh man, we're gonna have it tonight. But this was really the only time that we had the satellite problem and it was just right out of the gate. The next one we did was M3. It is a globular cluster. Um, this one is one of the Hubble Challenge objects, and we tried doing it the other night from our home, and it was pointed too much south. And, you know, if you've watched some of my previous videos, shooting to the direct south is kind of challenging. We have some neighbors with the Griswold Christmas going on with some floodlights, and we have a street light. Plus, we had uh, um, it wasn't a full moon. It was a quarter moon going on to the south. So we didn't have much luck. So we wanted to try this up in a darker sky area. And this is what we got for M3. And this is really short exposure time. I, I didn't notate what that was, but um, it was we only imaged for maybe five minutes total. So this is M3. This one was pretty much a bust. I can't even remember the name of it. It is a galaxy. It is part of the June Hubble challenge. And so we thought we would give it a shot, but it was really close to the moon. And it was, we had to crop it and darken it so much to el eliminate that light from the moon that it just really didn't work out well. 
So we're going to have to try this one again when it's not a full moon or practically full moon. This one is M101. It's a spiral galaxy. It turned out pretty nice. It only has seven minutes of exposure time. So another short exposure time. That's one thing I've noticed with taking the sea star somewhere to do things. It's just not as convenient. I'm not going to stay up in the mountains with the mosquitoes and bears and wildlife and I don't know, the dark. It's kind of creepy sometimes. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I am not going to spend all night there doing this when I can do it at, a, at home from the comfort of my living room. You know, maybe I've gotten lazy over the years and I'm sure that is true, but this is only seven minutes of exposure. And so when I take my sea star out, we're not going to get long exposures because we're just limited in the amount of time that we are going to spend there. I, it was kind of nerve wracking driving home. We saw tons of, a lot of deer on the side of the road, one just standing right on the side of the road that I was worried was going to dart in front of us. And, you know, when you're going 45, 50 miles an hour on a mountain road with no lights, it, it's a little scary and dicey. So if you're going out there, please be careful. Um, but we did short exposures on this night. This one is M5. It's a globular cluster, another one of the June challenges for the Hubble challenge. Uh, but I only did one minute of exposure on this one. Globular clusters come in pretty brilliant from the very, very first exposure, and they do get better over time. But since we were out in the wild, we weren't devoting a lot of time. And so as once we got a fairly decent image, we stopped imaging. So this one and we were using the 22nd exposure, so this one only did three saved exposures, and it turned out pretty nice. This is M5. This is another image of that M101 with the seven minutes of exposure. In this version, you can see the moonlight coming in the bottom left-hand corner just a little bit. We did crop it in pretty tight so that you wouldn't see that as much. But this one is the original version off of the Sea Star. The previous one I showed was the denoised version. That's really all the enhancing I did on any of these images was I darkened them a little bit just so that the background would be dark and um, I cropped them. So I didn't do color. I didn't take out stars or do any of that stuff. This is straight off of the Sea Star editing apps. This is M3 again with seven minutes of exposure. I did this one again just because I've got a new appreciation for these globular clusters. I, they just come out and they pop so quickly. They're so satisfying that I really enjoy, have learned to enjoy those. At first I thought, why would I image stars? But man, they are pretty exciting when they are coming through on the app. And this is M3 for a second time. Well, it wouldn't be any respectable video if I didn't do some sort of experiment. So this one, I am imaging M16. It's another one of my favorites of late. And I wanted to just record the process of it imaging M16. I wasn't sure if I would be able to get it because it is pretty low on the horizon. And it rises in the south where we had that almost full moon as an issue. Um, but this is what we were doing this night and so we're imaging i just recorded for a few minutes a couple of the exposures there's the very first one that it saved and just so that we could see when those spires or those columns start to appear it's not on the first 22nd exposure um, but they do come up here soon i don't record for super long and after the recording ends, I will post the results. So I'll post the results from a couple of nights ago from my backyard, which is Bortle 6. And then I will post the Bortle 4 where I'm currently at um, so that we can compare them and see if they're, they do the same kind of image. Is, can we see a difference with the different of the lighting? You know, there, this isn't a great science experiment. You know, the moon was a different um, 
part of the process. It was only probably a quarter moon or a crescent moon at the time I did the one in my yard. And now it's almost a full moon. And so it's not a great experiment, but we're going to do it anyway. The video only lasts a few more seconds and then we will do our comparing of the M16 from a Bortle 6 to a Bortle 4 and we'll see if we can see a difference with the lighting. So I did have a little snafu in the saved images that didn't they didn't save to my phone and so it is the next morning and I am going into the C star and I'm going to create the stacked images from the Bortle 6 and the Bortle 4. So this first one is from the Bortle 4, I believe. And I what I did is I just went in and I selected 21 of those 20 second exposures. And then I am stacking it in the Deep Sky Stacker in the C-Star app. Uh, then I will get the image. I will denoise the image. And then I will crop it just so that we can see those spires so we can compare them a little easier. But I'm not going to do any enhancing or anything in the app. All I'm going to do is um, crop it so that we can compare. And so I am selecting 21 of the exposures from last night in Bortle 4. And then I will go in and I will select 21 20 second exposures from the Bortle 6 that I did a, a few nights ago in my yard. I will stack both of those images. Uh, it does take a little bit of time here. I'm, I'm recording through doing that just so you can see the process. Um, but it doesn't take super long. And, I, and while it's doing that, I'm explaining what I'm doing. At the end of the video, I will put these images side by side so that we can compare them. Uh, this right here is me denoising that image. And then I'm going to crop it and then I will save it to my phone and you will see that process here. Um, right now I'm going into the editing and then I'm cropping it and so that we can see those um, pillars of creation. And then I'm going to go save it to my phone and then I will go back into my album and the Deep Sky Stacker and I am selecting 21 exposures from the Bortle 6 that I did several nights ago. And then I am going to deep sky stack all of those. And so this is the process that I'm going to do. I want to compare to see if the Bortle 4 made much of a difference to the Bortle 6. Um, I'm not sure it will just because I'm doing it at different times of the moon phase. And so the ones from Bortle 6 had less of the moon interfering because it was just a crescent moon. The Bortle 4 had almost a full moon. It wasn't quite full, but almost. And so I'm not sure if we're going to see a great difference. I will, I will plan to do in the future another experiment similar to this where we don't have the moon interference. Um, this was a trial run with us going up in the canyon. It was a fun experiment and a re it kind of is eye-opening to figure out, well, why do I love the sea star so much? Well, for me, at my stage in life, I'm retired. I don't want to hike out in the, to the boonies with gear and boxes and scopes and things. I really like the convenience of the sea star and that's why I've opted to relinquish my Celestron gear and go with the sea star. And so this was a little inconvenient because it's getting pretty late in the evening at night. It's almost, it's probably 11, between 11 and midnight our time that we're finishing up this experiment. Um, and so we're ready for bed. We're, we go to bed early. <laughs> so, but we still got to drive home. So here's the Bortle um, 6 image. So this is the Bortle 6 image taken from my backyard. Uh, we did have a crescent moon that was fairly close by. And so there was some light interference. 
I am zoomed in a little bit on those pillars of creation just so that we can see the detail a little clearer. And next up, I will show you the Bortle 4. And then once I've shown the Bortle 4, I'll put them both on the same screen so that we can see them together and compare. Here's our Bortle 4. And both of them have the same number of 20 second exposures. I selected 21 of the exposures and stacked them both. So it would, it would equate to seven minutes of exposure time. And so they're both the exact same number of exposure time and they have both been enlarged um, you see the Bortle 6 on the left and the Bortle 4 on the right I've enlarged them onto the pillars of creation so we can see the detail that is there I am pleasantly surprised that I do see a little bit of a difference it's not huge because we got to keep in mind we've got seven minutes of exposure on each of these and that just really is a drop in the bucket when you're imaging nebula especially the more time the more detail you're going to get um, we did have the hurdle of the full moon with the Bortle 4 and just a crescent moon with the Bortle 6 um, so the the lighting wasn't really a fair comparison probably um, but I do think that the one the Bortle 4 does show a little bit more detail on those pillars of creation than the one on the left the Bortle 6 uh, it's also the Bortle 6 is a little bit darker and so it wasn't uh, allowing in quite as much of the nebula light probably due to the Bortle 6 um, but there was I was pleasantly surprised that there was a difference in the two I really didn't expect there to be with such short exposure and the moon issue but there was a difference and so I guess the summary is the Bortle 4 is definitely better than Bortle 6 even if you have a full moon uh, we will maybe do this experiment again at another time it's just not extremely convenient to take the sea star a uh, half hour away from home the sun doesn't go down until you know about 10 p.m it gets dark enough and by 10 p.m us old people are ready to be calling it a day and getting in our comfy clothes instead of just starting to image for the night and so we really only had a couple hours of time that we could image and so um i don't know if how often we will do the traveling somewhere to do this uh, just because the convenience of the sea star is one of the things that i i got it for it's just so convenient to be able to do it from home setting up the plan is wonderful but, you know, you can't do that up in the mountains if you've just gone on a little outing to do some imaging. And so I don't know how often we'll make the effort to go to Bortle 4, but it was a fun experiment, a good way to try out some new things. And, and like always, we're wishing clear skies for everyone. Thanks for watching.